Hi, my name is Miss Christie. I'm a teaching artist in the PACE program. We integrate art lessons with the classroom curriculum. We're coming to you thanks to the Acadiana Center for the Arts, the nonprofit organization that manages the PACE program, and the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. Today we're going to be talking about orcas. Do you know the other name for orcas? If you said killer whales, you're right. So there are lots of mammals that live in the ocean. Mammals are animals just like us. They feed their young milk and they, they have babies that look just like miniature versions of themselves. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a picture of orcas today in the Arctic. There are orcas all over the world and these animals are hunters, they are carnivores, predators that work in groups to hunt down their prey. You can see in these photos that these orcas are working together. They hunt in groups and they'll work together to capture the prey that they're after. The different groups of orcas are called pods, and in that pod, you'll probably have about 20 family members. Most of the time, they're kind of like animals that live on land in herds, and that there's one big male or bull, and then there are several females that take care of the young. And they're very protective of their young, and they only have babies every five to 10 years. The project that we're gonna do only needs a few materials. You'll need white paper. Construction paper is great, but if you don't have that, you can just use a piece of regular copy paper. You'll need a pencil. We're gonna start by drawing a pencil drawing. Artists do this so that when they apply the color, they know exactly what shapes they're gonna be coloring. You'll need all the crayons in your box, but I recommend that you find all of your blues and then you decide on what your sky is gonna be. Our sky is gonna either be a sunrise or sunset, so you'll want yellows and pinks and purples and orange for the sky and you'll want all of the blue colors for the water and the icebergs. And of course, our orcas are only two colors. Do you know what colors orcas are? Black and white, that's right. They are black and white. And the, I wonder often, what are the purpose of those colors? Maybe the, the dark black color on the top of their body absorbs more sunlight to keep them warm in the cold Arctic waters and the white underbelly might be a little bit of camouflage against the ice or the sky if it's full of clouds. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to fold your paper and what this will do is it'll help me guide you. I want you to find it corner to corner and I want you to fold it in half lengthwise just like this. Then I want you to fold it in half again. So you'll end up with a small rectangle. And remember, corner to corner. If you don't fold it perfectly, that's okay. It's really just a guide so I can say, follow the line and draw a curved line here or a dot there. So once you have your paper folded, you're gonna open it up. And I want you to see that there's a vertical fold like this, there's a line down the middle vertical that's up and down, and there's a line down the middle side to side. Do you know what that's called when a line goes from side to side? It's called a horizontal line, and that's the first one we're gonna start with. I have a piece of paper already up here with my two folded lines, and what I want you to just is use your pencil. Again, this is called an underdrawing. Underdrawing is so that you know where to put the color. Find the middle with your finger. Just point to the middle of your paper, right there where those two lines crisscross. Do you see it? This is the middle. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a horizon line. 
and that means it's the line from side to side and we're going to draw that a little bit higher than the fold. So find the middle, trace your finger up just about an inch or so, and you're going to draw a line side to side. If you need to, you can put a dot here and here and connect the two. So you're going to draw just a slight wavy line. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw our icebergs. Now icebergs can be seen above the water. As soon as you go below the water, you can see that they're much, much bigger pieces of ice. In these pictures, you can see above the water, they are just small little islands of ice. When you see under the water, you can see that they're massive underneath the water. So we're going to be drawing both parts of the iceberg. We're going to start on the left side. And on the water line, we're going to draw a kind of wavy triangle. Then we're going to come off the top here and we're going to draw another wavy line, kind of jagged coming down, just like that to the line that we drew of the water. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw underneath the water. So watch what I do and then you try. We're going to do much the same thing, but we're going to go down into the water and then we're going to go back up to that line that we first drew when we first drew our triangle. After you finish that, you're going to start down here at the bottom of your iceberg and you're going to draw another kind of jagged, zigzag, wavy line to the other side of your iceberg that's above the water. So any time that you need to press pause to catch up, please do so. I'm going to keep moving along, but if there's ever a point where you're drawing or coloring and you need to stop, go ahead. The other iceberg is going to be on the right, and it's going to be a little bit smaller and kind of flat. Maybe an iceberg that a polar bear or seal or penguins would rest on. So you're going to draw from the water line up just a little bit and then maybe flat across to the, uh, to the end of the paper. Then you're going to do another little line that just kind of j is jagged and it's a bit of another part of the iceberg. We're going to do the same thing we did over here. We're on the end. You're going to draw a jagged line that kind of comes down and then goes back up. And it can come back up anywhere. You can draw some more jagged lines to make it look even more realistic. Because the ice is all broken up and been melted in certain places when the sun is warming it and it in the daytime, especially during summer, these icebergs melt, at, especially at the top. All right, so now we're ready to draw our orcas. The first one we're going to draw is the orca that's in the center. We're going to draw three of them as if there were two babies and one mom. The first thing is that we're going to draw the mother orca coming out of the water. Watch me first and then you try. I'm going to start by putting my pencil right here on the left side of this folded line. We're going to be just on the top of the water and we're going to draw a small curved line toward the middle fold. Can you see that? Now we're going to draw that top fin. So watch me first and then you try. It's a little bit of a curved line in the other direction and then back to the fold of the paper. You're going to continue this fin past the fold and then stop. 
After you do that, we're going to draw the nose of the orca. Watch me first and then you try. We're going to do a curved line going up and over. And then we're going to stop. After you do that, you're going to draw another curved line coming back to the water, but make sure that your orca is thick enough. They're very thick creatures. They have a special layer of fat called blubber, and it's what helps them stay warm in that icy cold water. So draw that curved line down toward the water, but don't go all the way down to the water. Stop just a little bit short of the, waters, um, the water line. After you do that, we're going to draw in the, one of those side fins. And this fin is going to dip just into the water a little bit. So watch me first and then you try. It's going to curve out and into the water and then back. It's kind of a leaf shape. And stop at the water's edge. We stopped at the water's edge and now we're going to be creating the belly. So this fin shouldn't necessarily be at a sharp point. It should be a little bit rounded. And then the same with the belly of the whale. It's not going to be straight across in a diagonal. It's going to be a bit of a curved diagonal. I want you to find the very middle with your finger, that place where the two folds meet, and trace it down a little bit to about here, and put a tiny little dot. After you do that, we're going to be drawing that shape, that curved line that shapes the belly. Watch me first and then you try. We're going to go from the bottom part of the fin and we're going to draw a curve of line that is also a diagonal down to that point. The next thing we're going to do is make that beautiful tail. So I want you to put an, I want you to trace your finger down again and right here we're going to put a point and then we're going to put two points on either side. Put it far enough because they have big wide tails at the tip. Here's how our tail is going to curve. The belly comes down to that point and then it curves around. So you're going to cross that folded line and then go back to that point on the line. Once you have that curved line, then you're going to continue. You're going to make another curved line to the tip of the tail. And then you're going to draw kind of a a curved line like a, a rainbow or a little bit of a frowny face curved line for the bottom of the tail. So let's finish the back of the body. Behind the top fin, we're going to create a curved line that goes down to the tip of the tail. But we don't want to make this part too skinny because our killer whales or our orcas have big strong tails. So watch me first and then you try. The, I'm going to redraw behind that fin and then I'm going to come around and make the body thick enough so that you, it resembles the, the strong body of the orca. And then I'm going to keep going and then flare it out to the tip of the tail. The next step is we're going to create that divide between the top half and the bottom half of their body. Start at the tip. Watch me first and then you try. We're just going to make a diagonal line and stop right about here where this fin is. Next you're going to draw a line to that fin 
and go down to the tip and then come back up and this fin actually is going to keep going a little bit and make a little curve toward the water. This is going to be where their white of their belly is. Watch me first. They have a very interesting shape on their belly. I'm not sure what it's supposed to mimic, but in a way it kind of looks like a little bit of bird's wings. You can see in this picture a good amount of it shows. And when we draw that, you're going to do like this. Watch me first. You're going to go down and stop. Then, and it's before you get to that middle folded line, you're going to go back up and make a curve and then go back down and pass up the middle fold and stop at the end of their body. So it creates kind of this little hook shape right here. The white of their body oftentimes stops here and then starts back up again down by their tail. So you're going to draw a line starting from about here and you're going to go down and then to the other side of their tail. Then here you're going to do the same thing and it's really just going to be a dark outline. We're going to be coloring that black and this area of the tail is going to be white. One of the distinguishing marks on the killer whale or orca is that white spot that's kind of shaped like an oval behind its eye. All right, we're finished with the, the larger orca. Now we're going to draw two small ones. If you want to stop here and just do the one orca, you can. We're going to draw two babies, one on each side. But if you want to fast forward to the part where we begin coloring, you can do that now. Again, press pause if you need to catch up and then press play when you're ready. We're going to draw two kind of football shapes here and here. So watch me first and then you try. This one is going to come from the left side of the edge of your paper and it's going to be kind of a leaf or a football shape. And then it's going to have a little bit of a curve going toward the tail. After you do that, we're going to draw that top fin right about in the middle of that curved line. You're going to give it its top fin. So do kind of a curve downward and then back. The next part is you're going to draw that halfway, half and half. You're going to start at the nose and you're going to draw through the body and stop. After that, you're going to draw that fin that's on the side of the body inside this shape of the body. It's not on the outside like the mother. And it's kind of the same football shape, but then stop. And we're going to draw that funny little hook curve line. So watch me. Across, back up, and then back down. After that, you're going to draw that little oval shape behind the eye. It's not actually where their eye is. The eye is in front of the white shape. I've always wondered what that feature is for. The next part is we're going to draw the baby on the right. This one's going to be a little bit different and then it's going to be in the middle right here in this section. Don't draw it too close to the bottom or you won't be able to put the tail. So right about here, a little bit below that folded line, you're going to draw that same kind of oval or football shape. If you do the shape too big, you can always just make it a little smaller. It 
Anytime you make a mistake, we're using pencil so you can erase it. The, the pencil marks will be covered up by us coloring. So I made my oval a little bit smaller to fit the tail. And the tail is going to come off the bottom of the body, curve in, and then back out. And then on this side, curve in and then back out. And then you'll just give it that little bit of a curved line down here. We'll give it its side fins. And then we're going to give it that funny shape on its belly. Watch me first and then you try. It's only going to come down to about where we stopped at the bottom of our oval. But we're going to start up here by the tip top of the fins. And we're going to go in towards the middle, up, down, up, down, up. And you're going to try to draw that line all the way up to the tip of the fin. This is all going to be black and this is all going to be white. And the bottom of the tail is going to start here and you're going to draw out toward the tip and out toward the tips of the tail on each side. So this part will be colored what left the white of the paper and this part will be colored with black crayon. Same thing here, white of the paper, black crayon. So we're going to do that part first. Since we've drawn in all of our details, now you can get your crayons out. And we're going to start by coloring the orcas. So just to show you what I mean by the areas that are the white of the paper, I'm going to do this little guy, this baby, and I'm going to start with his fins. I'm just going to outline them first. I'm going to draw over my pencil marks. And then I'm going to color this part in. But I'm going to leave the white of the paper here. So you go ahead and try that. I always recommend not starting with your main feature, which is the mother jumping out of the water, start with one of the babies so that you can get a, an idea of how you're going to draw and color this orca in. You're also going to trace all of your pencil lines. Sometimes when you see the orcas in the water and they're jumping, they're often celebrating. They communicate with echolocation and clicks and whistles, just like whales and dolphins do. Other dolphins, because remember, an orca is the largest dolphin in the world. So there we've colored in the black areas and left the white areas, the white of the paper. So now I'm going to do the baby on the left. I'm going to start by tracing out my pencil lines with the black crayon. Remember, that little spot behind its eye is going to stay white. So trace that and then color around it. You're going to color that top fin and all the top part of his body black. All right, so I finished this one and now I'm going to do the mother orca. I'm going to start again at the tip of her nose and trace all the pencil marks all the way down to her tail. They have little black tips of the tail. Color that in, but leave the tail white. I'm going to color, I'm not going to color in the belly, but I am going to trace with the black crayon. I'm going to draw that middle line from their nose to the fin, and then I'm going to trace out the fin. I'm going to trace 
that funny shape on their belly. I'm gonna trace the pencil mark where I put that spot behind their eye, and then I'm gonna color all of the top of their body in black. So you go ahead and do that. You can press pause if you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and color mine in, and I'll see you in a few minutes. I've colored in my orcas. I traced on the outside of each one where the white is. And now we're gonna color the icebergs. So with these guys, try to find your blue-greens. I said before, blue-green, cerulean blue, pacific blue, robin's egg blue, all of those colors are a blue-green turquoise color. So that's what we're gonna use just for these. We're gonna use dark blue for the water and that'll help our iceberg stand out a little bit. So find all of those colors. I have several here. And you're gonna do the different sections of the iceberg different blues. So for example, I'm gonna use all darker blue-greens at the bottom inside the water and all lighter blue-greens at the top. So like robin's egg blue, I'm gonna use at the top. In this section, If you don't have all of these colors, you can combine colors. So you would color like a regular blue and then a blue-green together. Or you would do a little bit of green over a regular blue to make blue-green. The other color I have here is Wild Blue Yonder. I'm going to do the other side this color. It's kind of a blue-gray color. And I'm going to use these colors on the other side as well. So what we're do doing by coloring it different colors and different sections is creating little bits of light and shadow. It'll look like a big block of ice. So I'm going to use a little bit of blue green, but I'm only going to color very lightly. But then under the water, I'm going to color it much darker. Here and here. I'm going to actually outline my shape here and then color the whole thing in. And then I'm going to use cerulean blue on this side. Another one is, another good one for this is Pacific Blue. It has just a little hint of green in it. I like to combine my colors just to make my own colors. It makes your picture unique to you. No one else is gonna make the same combinations. Okay, so now we're gonna do the dark colors for the water. So I have here indigo, denim, beautiful, and regular blue. So I'm gonna start with my regular blue color. Oh, I also have midnight blue. And I'm just going to color in everything under the water line. So as you're doing that, you can think about what is the water going to look like when it's flowing around the animal. Take your time. You can take a break and come back to it later. And remember, you can always pause, finish what you're working on, and then press play. So I colored this in regular blue, and now I'm going to come back with one of my other blues, like this denim. So the water's all around them, and it's ice cold. Mm -hmm. 
they have that layer of blubber that helps keep them warm. They're warm-blooded animals, so their bodies can actually control their temperature. Just like when we are running around and jumping and playing, we work up a sweat and our heart rate goes, our heartbeat is fast and we're, um, we're feeling very, very warm. They do the same thing. They warm up by playing in the water and hunting. And that, again, they travel in family groups. And they travel all over the world looking for food. But there are certain pods that actually come here into the Gulf of Mexico. I would love to see one one, one day. All right, so you can continue combining your blues. Well, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the sky. The sky is going to look like the sun is setting or just coming up. Um, and my son wanted to put a sun behind his orca, and so he drew a, a big crescent-shaped line over the top of his orca and colored that whole thing in right here orange and yellow. And then my daughter made a solid pink and orange sky. What I like to do is create a little bit of yellow at the bottom here as if the sun is just peeking out above the horizon. And then start adding in my other warm colors. I also have a color here called salmon, and it's a little bit of orange in the pink. So I'm going to use that over my orange, and then I'm going to go up a little bit with that. You want to try not to color over your orca because you can actually pick up some of that crayon and it'll smear. All right, I'm going to get another pink, carnation pink. I'll go a little bit higher. So orcas have no predator that hunts them. The only thing that is happening with them is that the pollution in the ocean is killing them because they, um, they absorb a lot of the chemicals and in the ocean. And so that actually gets into the fat, the blubber that they have. And so scientists are finding that these animals are, are not dying of natural causes. They're actually dying of being poisoned. So they're trying to make it to where these animals are protected from that by making sure there's less pollution. So I'm just going to keep going up with my pinks and my purples. I have here plum and lavender. You can do your sky blue if you want to. But this way, it separates the sky from the ocean. And try to cover your whole paper. I always tell my students, I don't want to see any more white of the paper unless you did that on purpose, like the white of the orca, or if you were to draw in some clouds in the sky. But I want you to color all around those clouds if you do. There, there's our orca family. I wish I could see yours. If you want to share your pictures to my, on our Facebook page, I want to thank you for being with me today. I had a lot of fun doing this project with you. We will be posting a new project every day at 10 a.m. We'll also be airing these lessons on the Acadiana Open Channel. That's Cox Channel 16 and LUS Channel 4. Please share these with your friends. I know that they would love to have these activities to do. All of our lessons are geared towards kindergarten, first and second grade, but we welcome anyone to join in the fun. 
On the Acadiana Open Channel, those lessons are aired at 8 a.m. for kindergarten and 9 a.m. for first and second grade. Some will be visual arts and some will be creative movement. If you are interested in supporting programs like this, please visit us at our website, AcadianaCenterForTheArts.org. You can also have private lessons with me. You can contact me at LushCeramics.com. Send me an email through my website. Thanks again for being with me today.